Hello, so you might have heard that it's not a very good idea to photograph the O3, the oxygen data in narrowband when you have the moon, especially full moon in the sky. As you can see in this simulation in Stellarium, I have the moon right here on the meridian and if I change the day to something earlier when the moon is behind, as you can see the night sky gets much more darker, the Milky Way starts to show up, so the presence of the moon definitely affects the overall darkness of the sky and it especially impairs your O3 data whereas it's commonly acceptable to show the hydrogen data if you have even if you have the full moon in the sky if it's not too close to your target and if you don't have the moon in the sky the same sort of light pollution that you have from the moon applies also from the sun uh, near dusk and dawn for instance if i go to like five o'clock here as you can see at four o'clock it's much more darker and then at five of course it's getting brighter and brighter uh, if we go to the dawn hours we have the blue hour and then we have um, golden hour we have sunrise so uh, if you are photographing the night sky in narrowband it's a good idea to shoot the O3 data around midnight when it is at the darkest and then uh, sort of um, if you're shooting uh, HOO for instance with hydrogen and oxygen then it's a good idea to shoot oxygen when it's the darkest and then you can shoot hydrogen sort of um, straight after like nautical dusk until nautical dawn you don't even need to have the true astronomical night to collect the good quality HA data. And in order to leverage this in my day-to-day -day astrophotography, I have created a plugin for Nina, which is called uh, Pick Optimal Filter. And this plugin will automatically figure out how much time do you have devoted for your current target and how to divide this time between different filters that you can set in order to maximize the quality of your data per filter. So the common case would be HOO. Let me just show an example of how that would work. So I have a, an example sequence here in Nina. As you can see, I'm doing some basic commands like slew, autofocus, start guiding, and then I have my uh, loop that is looping until the nautical dawn. And I have two triggers to restore guiding if uh, it gets interrupted by clouds or something, and also dither after two exposures. And then inside here, I just have take exposure, 300 seconds of five minutes exposure. And I'm not specifying any filter here because the filter, the filter wheel will be controlled by this trigger of mine, which is called uh, pick optimal filter. So I can just drag it from here into this area of triggers. And then if you give it a second, it will automatically populate by default with O3 and HA filters. And the order of these filters matter here. So um, it, the way it works is that the filter that is here on the top will be used when you have the darkest patch of the night. And then the other filters will be used sort of in this order. So if I add also S2 here, uh, this trigger would make sure that we are shooting O3 around midnight. As you can see here on this sort of preview, if I started the sequence now, which was 9 p.m. and 26 minutes until nautical dawn, it will use the O3 data around midnight here, as you can see from like 11.27 to 1.52. Then it will use HA for an hour L12, sort of before O3 and after uh, O3. And then it will use S2 sort of straight, uh, sort of at the very beginning here, and then also straight before the nautical dawn, which is the end of this loop. So let's just delete this for a second. You can also in this um, filter define the ratios. If you want to use a different ratio, for instance, uh, uh, if you want to use, let's say, I want to shoot twice as much data on the O3 than on the HA, you can type two right here. And then if you give it a second, it will update itself. And right now, as you can see, uh, it will shoot four hours and 50 minutes of O3 and only like uh, two hours and something. Uh, if you add these two numbers up together, it will be twice as less as the 450 here. And that is pretty much it. You can also uh, use specify the custom start time. This is mostly for like testing purposes. Uh, I don't really recommend using that in a real world scenario. Uh, you could you could type in here, for instance, that I want to start from, let's say, uh, this hour. 
and then it will show you um, uh, the numbers based on this start time. So you can sort of simulate how this would work if you were setting up your sequence at midday. But then if you actually run your sequence, I would recommend to switch it off because the f this trigger is clever enough to actually figure out when you start your loop and then it will capture this time when the loop actually starts and it will figure out the time then when the loop is going to end based on the loop conditions that are on the same sort of sequential uh, instruction set as this trigger and then it will calculate this uh, uh, as you can see here and here's an example uh, sort of like a time lapse of me using this uh, in the real world and as you can see it switches between the two filters accordingly so uh, you don't really need to specify which filter do you want to use uh, any any anywhere further down in the sequence and it actually simplifies the sequence quite a lot because you just need one trigger and you don't need to have a bunch of instructions like switch filter and whatnot right here and the main idea behind here is that after every night like the way i use it with ratios of just one and one is that after every night i want to have an equal amount of ha and o3 data given of course that i have no interruptions with like clouds or whatever um, so after every night I can decide that I'm done with my target if, for instance, there's a patch of really bad weather so I can just edit my data and I'm not stuck with only O3 or only HA for weeks and also it ensures that I'm uh, shooting the O3 when it is the optimal time of night which is again around midnight, around the local midnight when the sun is on the opposite side of your current local meridian. And this is how this filter works. Uh, it currently supports a bunch of different loop conditions uh, here. Um, loop until time is one of them. Also all of the altitude based loop conditions like loop until altitude. Uh, it also supports the loop until next target hour angle from orbiculum. So this is something that I uh, use a lot when, when I'm shooting uh, different targets um, in the same night. So it will be able to figure out uh, which of the loop conditions that it currently supports is going to interrupt the loop first. And it will base these calculations by, based on that time. In the future, I will, uh, I'm, I am planning to support more loop conditions. So if the loop condition that you want is not currently supported, chances are that it will be very, very soon. So this is it. This is Big Optimal Filter. If you are shooting in monochrome and you have an automated filter wheel that you can uh, switch uh, using software, then I would highly recommend to uh, take a look at this.